Hi, I'm Thomas. Welcome to this video where you will learn the basic concepts that you need to know to build your own Victor apps. Before we start, let's enter your environment so I can explain a few terms we will use during the video and in our documentation. When you log in, you land here. We call this your environment. And here on the workspaces tab, you can see all your workspaces. This one is the development workspace where you see the app you are making. And the other ones are apps that are ready to use. Let's open one. Here, you see what we call the editor, because here is where you edit your designs. Well, that's all you need to know for now. Environment, workspace, and editor. Now let's talk about app types. There are three ways you can structure your app. You can make an editor, simple, or tree type app. In an editor type, you see the editor which you enter immediately in the workspace. This is used for simple calculations where you don't need to save your data. Now be aware that when you exit the app and come back, you will lose the data and need to start from scratch. With a simple type app, you can add a database to your application. When you enter a workspace, you will see a folder to store your design first. When you open one, you will enter the editor. Now you can make some changes, save different designs and continue to work on these designs later. The tree type app gives you total flexibility to set up the data structure of your application. This will enable you to add as many editors and folders to store more data and to connect them as you like. At the same time, these are also much more complex to make. So we recommend you start with the simple or the editor type. Now that you know the three app types, let's start building one. First, we need a place to store your app files. You should make a separate folder for each app if you choose to develop locally or a new repo if you use GitHub Codespaces. I develop locally, so let's open the file explorer and make a new folder to store our app. Open your code editor and then the folder we just created. Now we need to follow a few steps to get started. We'll create an empty template, clear the database of our development workspace, and then install the app. Finally, we can start it. So to create the app template, go to the terminal, check that you see the folder here. This is important. And now you can write Victor CLI create app, followed by app type editor, simple or tree, depending on what you want. This will make all the files for a Victor app as you can see over here. Now we need to clear the database of your development workspace, install the app and start it. We can do this using Victor CLI clean start. Now you can just let Victor do its thing. The process may take a few minutes. You will know when it's ready when you see this. Now your app is connected and you can start coding and see your app update automatically in your developer workspace. Before we move on, I want to give you a tip to save some time. When we use Victor CLI clean start, we are actually running three commands. Victor CLI clear, that clears the database for the development workspace. Victor CLI install, that installs the app and all the dependencies and Victor CLI start that starts the app and connects the code editor to the development workspace. You don't always need to run all of them. For example, when you close your code editor and want to start the same app again, and this has to be the latest app that you installed, you can just open the folder in the code editor and run Victor CLI start because you already installed the app before. This is much quicker than doing the full installation all over again. Now let's think for a moment that you want to open another app. Something you downloaded from GitHub, for example. How does that work? The process is pretty much the same. Just open the folder with your code editor and run Victor CLI clean start. That's it. Now let's take a look at the files we created earlier. The file you will use the most is the app.py. This is where you will write all the Python code of your application. The next two files we want to look at are the requirements and the victor config file. 
in the requirements, we can specify any Python package that we want to use. Victor will read this file when you install your app and include all the dependencies you need. So, if you update this list, you also need to install your app again using Victor CLI install. In the Victor config, you can see the configuration of your app, like the app type and the Python version that your app is using on the cloud. Let's skip the test folder and the change log as they are not that important for now. Now let's go back to app.py and check the app code. You can see we have a parameterization and a controller class. And don't worry if you don't know what a class is yet. The only thing you need to know is that parameterization, we will add the inputs and the buttons and the layout options like tabs, sections, steps, and more. In the controller, we define our calculation and how we want to show our result. So let's start and take a look at the possibilities for our inputs, or to put it in Victor terms, the elements of the parameterization. For the input fields, Victor offers a wide variety. The basic fields you should be aware of are the numeric fields for values such as integers, floats, textual inputs for long and short forms of text, Boolean fields to enable or disable some parts of the code, file upload fields for uploading files, options and selections, and this is also possible for entities, and then for maps, Victor offers map-specific inputs. And there are many more that you can check out in the documentation. It's also good to know that Victor offers buttons that initiate an action, and there's also a download button to download a set of results. Should you want to make a dynamic set sharing the same parameters, you can use the table or the array. There are still many more elements that you can use in your parameterization, so make sure to check those out too. Now let's take a quick look at the outputs that Victor can produce. In Victor, these are called a view. Views are added to the controller class. The first view I would like to show you is the Plotly view. The Plotly view uses Plotly to create a good looking interactive chart. You can use all the charts that Plotly's graphs objects provides. Then there's also the geometry view. This view is great for visually representing your 3D models. One of my favorite features of the geometry view is that it supports file types such as 3DM and IFC, meaning I can visualize my complex models from Rhino and Revit in Victor. Next, I would like to talk about maps. The map inputs that I mentioned before can be shown on Victor's map view. If you are a fan of the GeoJSON, Victor also provides a GeoJSON view that you may use for all your GIS applications. If you would like to show an image in your app, Victor offers a wide variety of image views, including GIFs and SVG, so that even dynamic outputs of your visuals can be shown in the app. In case you want to add reporting to your app, Victor lets you use Microsoft Word files as a template for PDF reports as well. If that's not enough, each of the aforementioned views can also be combined with a data view, where you may display data alongside the view. You can also have this data displayed in a standalone view too. Now that we have an idea of all the different Victor elements, let's add some to a simple application. First, we will quickly import the number field and the components for a geometry view. Once we have those, let's enter our parameterization class and create a number field, which we will name length. I will give it a default of one, and I will repeat this for the width and also the height. For my output, I will add some code for a geometry view to my controller class so that we can make a simple box which will use the parameters that we just added to the parameterization. 
I will quickly explain the code. It starts with the decorator. This decorator tells Victor what type of output we want. We can also give the output a name, which will appear in our app, and the duration guess. This duration guess will let Victor know whether the view should be refreshed immediately or by the press of a button in the user interface. Then we define a function, and the function for a Victor view will always have the same layout. By adding the self to the definition, we can access all the attributes and methods of our controller class. Params will let our view connect to the parameters in the parameterization, and the two stars followed by quarks is used to pass a keyworded variable length argument list. But do not worry too much about that. Then we generate a simple box using the square beam from Victor and return that in a geometry result. If I save my app, head over to my environment and open my development workspace, you will see that I have my parameters on the left and my box displayed on the right. But changing a parameter does not change the box. To do this, I need to go back to my code editor and in my function for the geometry view, I will need to connect the length, width and height to the parameters. I can do this by taking the variable and writing params.length, params.width and params.height for each of the parameters. I can save the app again and if we go back to the browser, you can see the parameters will now update the box. If I now refresh my page, all my progress is reset. That is because the app is stateless, meaning it does not store any information from our previous interaction and lets us start from a clean slate. Although this is quite a simple example, any app that we make will use this connection between the parameters and the controller. Now you know the basics of Victor, and you should have an idea of what input is right for your variable and which view will match your output. Not sure where to start? Then I suggest you take a look at the tutorials on offer. Here you can use and become familiar with all the basics that I just showed you. If you are feeling confident, you can also take a look at our integrations. Although these are a bit more difficult to implement, adding an integration and applying a software package such as Revit or Rhino can make your apps extremely valuable once you have made a tutorial. I highly recommend you try to make one of your own apps and you can publish it on the cloud and ask your colleagues and friends for some feedback. And before you know it, you'll be building tools to automate the boring and engineer the awesome.